Ron DeSantis' recent move to revoke Disney's tax exemption is criminal and evil. Stick around and I'll explain point by point why every counter-argument to this fails. This attack comes about as a result of the feud over the company's opposition to its parental rights and education bill. The resort, housed within its own self-governing pseudo-covenant called the Reedy Creek Improvement District, or RCID, covers over 100 square kilometres, acting with the same authority as a county government. The Disney Corporation provides emergency services, utilities, roads, mass transit, several solar plants, and even had plans to build its own damn nuclear reactor. All of this done privately, which is scarcely different from our vision of future covenant communities. We should be celebrating such an achievement, not calling for its downfall out of desire to virtue signal over how much we hate the wokes. This pseudo-covenant decided to stand in defiance of state law, which prompted the state to respond by robbing it en masse. No supporter of DeSantis here can be reasonably framed as a secessionist or a libertarian. <laughs> The neo Prague DeSantis supporters make here as their argument that it is unfair that Disney get the supposed privilege of not having to pay taxes, and that this unfair situation may be justly ironed out by the revocation of said privilege. This is a frame of taxation that is completely ignorant of the law, however. Taxation itself is a criminal action done unto people. The solution to unequal taxation is not to bring in equal taxation, it's to not tax anyone at all. After all, the libertarian solution to a serial killer who specialises in killing white women is not to confront this butcher and have him kill men and people of other races in equal quantities. It's certainly not fair to the women who are slaughtered by him, but fairness is not the highest libertarian virtue. We want fairness insofar as we want adherence to natural law, which is fair by its nature, but there are plenty of other fair systems that are absolutely anti-liberty. It is liberty what matters here, not fairness. Heck, if DeSantis really wanted to stick it to the mouse, and be entirely fair in the process, why didn't he revoke IP protection, or extend Disney's special status to its competitors such that they can manoeuvre without state interference? This would not only satisfy the misplaced urge some libertarians feel for fairness, but it would be entirely consistent with natural law. <laughs> An alternative approach the neoprags may wish to take is to say that the Disney Corporation is an arm of the state, and that it is therefore fine to tax them, as this is simply moving the state funds from one part of itself to another. This thesis is to be analysed in two parts. First, I shall go over what it takes for a group to be considered an arm of the state, and second, I shall look at whether the taxation of such an entity really is just moving funds around. To understand the first half of the thesis, Austrian, or more precisely Hoppian class theory must be elucidated. Under this theory, the two classes consist, on the one hand, of producers, homesteaders and traders, this is called the productive class, and on the other hand, those who expropriate the wealth of producers, homesteaders and traders. This class is the anti-productive class. It is those organisations that are anti-productive that are called the state. As Franz Oppenheimer puts it, these entities make their wealth through the political as opposed to the economic means. Of particular import here is that to be truly anti-productive, simply receiving some benefits from the state is not enough. You must be actually petitioning for the expropriation of others. Similarly to how it's not a crime to say, gee, I wish someone would do something about Jeremy, but it is a crime to order one of your henchmen to kill Jeremy. From this, we can say that lobbying politicians to expropriate one's competition in order to get a subsidy is a crime, but simply minding your business and accepting a subsidy as it comes along is not. After all, if the latter was criminal, every person who received a stimulus check is now a state actor who may now be justly taxed. So to the extent that Disney lobbies for expropriation, they are committing a crime, a crime that demands retribution, but in what form is this retribution? Giving money to the state? That hardly seems right. The state wasn't the victim after all. But surely Disney's anti-productive lobbying makes them part of the state though, right? This has two issues. First, Disney is hardly characterised by anti-productive income. Their anti-productive activities do exist and are legally relevant, but they do not sit around taxing people all day without bringing anything to the fold. Disney produced many products that evidently consumers enjoy to a great extent. Granted, their market share is undoubtedly warped by their constant pushes for aggressive intellectual property protections, but not warped from zero. The state, on the other hand, is warped from zero. It does not engage in productive activities which you are allowed to not take part in. Second, even if we classify Disney as a part of the state, we have the larger state, namely the US federal government, attempting a destruction of this smaller state through a policy of taxing it into submission. Having Disney as a state implies that its actions are state secessionary, secession being something that is to be supported by libertarians, as it is the truncation of a larger state into two smaller ones. This puts the scientists in the position of Lincoln during the War of Southern Secession, a fact which I'm sure makes neoprags very queasy. If you enjoyed this response to the anti-Disney pro DeSantis neoprag wave, you have to watch this video where I point out the core flaws of neopragmanism as such. This will allow you to more effectively understand the flaws in their reasoning so that you will already know the missteps they are making in the future. <laughs>